Atlantic City. Back in the roaring 20s, this place was called the world's playground. The beach, the boardwalk, the gambling, there really was nothing like it. However, this city has fallen on hard times over the last couple decades. It has a really bad reputation for crime and blight and is suffering from a huge loss in tourism. It's a living, breathing decay in progress happening right now in front of us. So of course I had to see it, right? So I went there. The day I went to Atlantic City, it was a bright and sunny day, but there was a cold, stiff breeze. It was in late February of 2022, and it was as bad as I expected. Here's what I saw. Drugs and bombs, run down hoods, and a lot more. This is an Atlantic shitty tour. Now we're gonna spend a lot of time looking at the good and bad parts of Atlantic City. <laughs> well, there really isn't a lot of good here. Once you're a block from the casinos, it's really run down. Even the streets near the casinos are really shady. Right now, we're on Pacific Avenue. This is the main drag where most of Atlantic City's casinos are located. It's pretty sketch here. There's strip clubs, ghetto bars, liquor stores, and people standing around that look like they're doing something wrong. You'll see homeless people, addicts, drunks, rowdy teens, and the mentally ill. It's really sad. You probably wouldn't see somebody like this down here, though. You'd see somebody like that in Portland. Come on now. The liquor stores along Pacific Avenue get robbed. Tourists get robbed here all the time. Actually, most of the assaults that take place in Atlantic City happen right here, within viewing distance of these rundown casinos. This street's known as Pimp Alley. You can imagine why. A lot of the tourists that come to town don't leave this general area because a lot of the city's a dump. So they can get all their entertainment in one place. Within blocks of these casinos are people taking drugs or having sex out in the open. You're going to see people peeing on sidewalks, and you might be bullied into giving somebody spare change. There's cameras all over that the cops monitor 24-7, and they've had to hire more cops to watch over this part of town. That is, if they can even find cops who will take the job. But overall, if there's a best street in Atlantic City, I guess this would be it. Now let's go one street over. Now we're on Atlantic Avenue, one block further from the boardwalk. This street is bad news, pal. It too is super sketchy at all hours, but at night, it's a horror show. It's dark and seedy and people are doing terrible things in the shadows. Most people refuse to walk around the street at night. Even driving through here at night's a bad idea. You don't want to get caught at a red light on Atlantic Avenue at midnight. No way, no way. There's no wonder why Atlantic City got a bad reputation and why hotel bookings are down. This place used to be amazing. For a long time, it was the only place to offer legal gambling outside of Nevada. It's a short train ride from New York City, and people from all over the Northeast used to flock here every single year. Now there's casinos in Pennsylvania and Connecticut, or people can just fly down to Florida, Myrtle Beach, or Virginia Beach. Plus, Hurricane Sandy really did a number on this place. Although, some people will say that Hurricane Sandy made this place better by washing away some of the grime and the filth. But this city's been plagued by corruption, white flight, and bad casino management. Plus, what are the kids going to do here? You can't let them out of your sight. Things are so bad here now that they actually blare a siren at 10 p.m. every night, which means kids get inside. They were kind of optimistic here for a while. There were some fancy new casinos that opened up, and crime was going down just a little bit. But today, it's clear that a lot of state dollars have been funneled away from here and directed into North Jersey. Did you know the streets in Atlantic City are the same street names used in Monopoly? I think I heard that once before, Mappy. What's your favorite board game? I don't like board games. They're boring. <laughs> you don't like board games, Mappy? Then you're going directly to jail. Hey! Do not pass go and do not collect $200. Doesn't play board games. Who doesn't play board games? Well, this is a good time to transition to the boardwalk. Get it? The Atlantic City boardwalk isn't that bad during the day. There's a lot of stuff to keep you entertained for an afternoon. This video was taken in February, so it was pretty empty, but I caught a small glimpse of what it's like on the boardwalk at night. There's homeless people all over and mentally ill who wander around. You definitely have to watch your back on the boardwalk at night here. It's sad to see the world's first ever boardwalk in such decline. But hey, at least the ocean views are pretty, so that's cool. Okay, so now we're going to go to the bad side of town where all the dangerous neighborhoods are. Let me just say that practically this entire city's bad. 
There's some okay streets, but I haven't really been to a place before where there wasn't at least one large, nice part of town. Everything in Atlantic City, practically every block, is below average run down. Not ghetto ghetto, but ghetto. There's a lot of Section 8 housing here, and with that comes a lot of drug and gang activity. Lots of hoodlums, lots of pimps, a lot of robberies, assaults, and carjackings. Crime here is 12 times higher than the national average per capita. It's bad here at night. It's very run down. It's very sad. Look at the stop signs here. My God, my God. Now, a lot of people in these neighborhoods rely on the casinos for their employment. Dealers can make a lot of dough, maybe 25 an hour plus 100 bucks a day in tips, though most of the workers of the casinos make minimum wage. At least it's cheap here. The average home price is about 165k. You can see why. But that lifeline that the casinos provide residents here has been severed. Due to COVID and bad casino management, Atlantic City has seen some hard times, people. Residents here have been struggling for a long time now, but after COVID, 40% of the population here lives in poverty now. One Salvation Army worker said, I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime. Just drive around and you'll see the struggle and the heartache going on. The president of the Atlantic City Housing Authority said, The landscape in Atlantic City is pretty dire right now. I mean, he's not lying. Atlantic County lost more jobs than any other county in the country. A third of all jobs here have been lost due to the pandemic. But even before the pandemic, casinos were closing down. Six closed here between 2011 and 2016 alone. People here are broke and hungry and desperate. One nonprofit worker said, We're seeing families here that have never asked for free food before. You can see it in their eyes. They're afraid and embarrassed. And people here are worried that the homeless and poverty problem here are going to get really bad when more people get evicted. Sadly, there's a multi-year wait for low-income housing here. AC is a dumping ground for ex-felons, needle exchanges, welfare recipients, and sex offenders. Just look at the list of all the sex offenders who live here. What the what the? It's sad, but this is no longer the Atlantic City we knew growing up. Atlantic City certainly isn't unique though. There's a lot of former great places in this country that are going through this same fate right now. All right, YouTube. So right now we're joined by Ashley, who has been uh, living in Atlantic City or near Atlantic City for a long time. And, and she works in Atlantic City. And we're all curious to hear your perspective. Hi, Ashley. Hey, how are you? Good. <laughs> Dead. Yeah, I was just in Atlantic City about three weeks ago. Um, it was kind of dead because it was winter time. Right. Um, you know, it was about as 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 rough as I kind of expected. You know, I've seen far worse looking areas. Um, you know, it's it's rough. There's a lot of you know riffraff milling about. Now, I did not go down to Pacific Avenue or Atlantic Avenue at night. I got stuck at one of the casinos and was on a winning streak, so. I didn't make my way down near the boardwalk or anything at night. I hear it's really bad down there at night. Um, what What's your perspective? You've been there for a long time. How is, how is it now? How has it changed? So in some ways, it's actually gotten a little bit better, I think. So I remember going down in the 90s, and the 90s was rough. Uh, I remember being a kid going, you know, driving with my mom through the city, and even just driving in broad daylight, you know, you would feel uncomfortable. Um, it's not that bad anymore. However, even in broad daylight, like there's times when I go on the boardwalk and I feel uncomfortable even on the boardwalk. Um, even yesterday, there was just a stabbing right in front of the Tropicana um, in the afternoon or in the morning. So, you know, I feel uncomfortable, not as uncomfortable as I once did. There's a lot of homeless. Um, they're kind of hidden pretty well. You have to know where to look. There's a lot of drugs, but this is in all cities, you know, across America. Um, yeah, but I mean, personally, for me, being a woman, though, especially, I think working there, you just have to be aware of your surroundings. Um, I told you a little bit, but I was also on my way to work one night at 6 p.m. on Father's Day, and there was a shooting, like, minutes before I was right there. So, you know, it's it's rough, but it has gotten a little bit better mm -hmm. yeah i mean uh, in the 90s a lot of america was pretty rough um, right. and you know crime kind of came down um and so you know it's good that it's doing better um a little bit but you know i hear that you know the casinos have been struggling because of um 
a, a, a change in, I guess, a, basically people's tastes have kind of changed a little bit. And then, and then the pandemic came right when Atlantic city was trying to kind of improve a little bit. There were some new casinos that opened. There was a little bit of excitement and then COVID happened. And like a bunch of people in the area are like struggling there. Um, it doesn't look like it's really bounced back yet. Have you noticed that at all? So right in the beginning of COVID, obviously I did. However, now, I mean, the casinos are pretty busy. It depends which one you go to. Some of them, I would say, are probably struggling, you know, still from COVID and everything going on. But, uh, like, I don't know if you got to check out um, Showboat. Did you check out Showboat? I did not. Should I have? <laughs> uh, that, that one, I would say, is struggling to kind of find its footing in, in what it even wants to be. But uh, some of them, they're picking back up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is it about the area that it, it seems like the, the it's it's attracted ex felons, um, drug dealers? Is is it just because it's just a, a gamble a place for gambling, and so those types of people just are attracted to that kind of environment? Sin City, it's a little mini Sin City. You know, I think if you look at the history of Atlantic City and what it was founded on, it was kind of founded on you know gangsters and drugs and all of that. So. I think through the years, it's just unfortunately carried that, uh, you know, carried that through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the neighborhoods. So like, you know, first of all, so down by the down on Pacific and, and Atlantic, kind of like down by the casinos, um, you know, lots of lots of people that were, you know, hanging around late in the day that looked like they were. I, I think I saw somebody peeing, um, it, you know, I. We're, we're all adults here. That's not the worst thing. Um, but, you know, you, you could kind of sense when you're in a place like there's some bad stuff going on down here and I wasn't even down there at night. Um, yeah. Is it dangerous for like, um, you know, tourists and folks that are staying down there to, to kind of wander around out down there at night? I would not wander around. I mean, even me, I don't venture off the beaten path. You know, I stick to the casinos. I stick to maybe the boardwalk directly in front of the casinos. I wouldn't, you know, say for tourists to go off of the beaten path and go too far away from the touristy, you know, sections. I don't feel comfortable. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you definitely, you see a lot of, there's a lot of mental illness, you know, like I said, there's a lot of people that you can see that are clearly on drugs. So, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable. What is the city have any plans to try to do anything? Is there like a, a, a plan? Is there, do they talk about anything that they're trying to do to fix things, make them safer, better? <laughs> No, I don't really see too much changing. And if anything, I see less police on the streets as well. You know, so no. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope it does. You know, I hope it does. And like I said, I, I've seen some improvements. Um, but, you know, it's not, it's still on, you know, it's not safe mm -mm. fully. Does that kind of stuff spill into the casinos or are the casinos relatively safe? Um, Cause I was in Vegas and I saw homeless people like laying down on the floor and, and oh, yeah. you, you oh, felt yeah. like people would chase you into the casinos, like, you know, like, you know, scary zombie men. Um, is it, is yeah. it bad in the casino? Oh yeah. Yeah. You see it in the casinos. I mean, even right where I work, you know, we have, you know, homeless individuals that are sleeping inside. Um, they'll be right outside, you know, of an employee entering sleeping, you know, next to the trash. I mean, it's, it's everywhere in the casinos everywhere. We actually had um, a security guard pull a, a man out. He was homeless and he was just, he was loud and he was arguing with people and they had to pull him out. And that was, you know, in the morning time, you know, a nice morning, 10 a.m., like a Sunday morning. So, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the neighborhoods around there, um, I, you know, I, I drove around a lot. I, I didn't really find... In Atlantic City proper. Now, Ventnor City looked a little bit better, uh, but Atlantic yes. City proper. I didn't see any like large, nice areas. It was all pretty much generally crummy, like everywhere, which I haven't really ever seen in a city. It's small, so it's not like it's a sprawling place. Right. Um, but those neighborhoods are they're pretty they're pretty run down. Um, do, does anybody ever venture up into there unless you have a reason to go up there? I mean, you probably would never even go up in there. No, there's actually a really nice aquarium that is, I guess that would be considered, I don't know if that's the north part. It's it's near the showboat and kind of like in the back. That's actually a nice area. It's right on the water overlooking like the Borgata. So I don't know if you were able to see like the Borgata and all of those casinos kind of away from Atlantic City a little bit. 
that's the nicer area, I would say. Uh, but then if you venture, you know, onto the, some of those side streets and everything, then it gets it gets a little sketchy. But mm-hmm. there are some nice areas. You just have to know where to look. And then as you get close, like Ventnor is good. It's a completely different world in Ventnor and, you know, right next to Atlantic City. Yeah. And there's no way you can get into trouble up there um, unless you get in your car and drive all the way back down to the boardwalk to right. find trouble. <laughs> I mean, you can find it if you look for it, but um, it's it's pretty safe up there. Right. Yeah. So do people in Atlantic city, is there like a discussion about, you know, maybe this place can be like amazing, like it was in the fifties and sixties and seventies and even eighties, you know, like, and and that at some point it kind of really kind of went downhill in the mid to late eighties. Do people, is there like a sense of like, you know, nostalgia? Do people, are people like thinking like like, we can make this place great again? Or is everybody just kind of like, you know, put their head down and go to work and. Yeah, I think, I think they are trying in some ways because some of the casinos, like they opened up the hard rock, which is a nice, it's a more modern casino. It's for, you know, the Taj Mahal was. So they're, they're thriving right now. Then places like showboat, they're kind of, gearing more towards kids. So they want to make it for, you know, like families. So family want to have family vacations to stay there. I mean, I personally wouldn't want to stay there, you know, with, you know, my children and everything, but they're, they're trying to make it more family oriented and they're trying to make it not just about like the gambling and just about, you know, the, the crummy side of Atlantic city, Mm -hmm. but you know, I don't know if they're going to be effective with that. Yeah. How much of the, I, I've heard that um, all the new casinos opening up in, in the Northeast and in, in um, Pennsylvania and Connecticut, and now New York city is talking about getting some, how much of that is, is negatively impacting Atlantic city right now? Um, maybe a little bit. However, online gambling is booming right now. Um, so I find that because of that, it's actually, it's benefiting Atlantic city in general because people can just sit at home and they can gamble. They don't even have to go to the casino anymore. So in that aspect, it's, it's helping. Helping because the casinos are still making money, but people don't have to go there. Yeah. 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 But like for folks that work at the casinos, that doesn't help them out though. Right. No, I mean, unless, unless you're an online dealer, you know, which oh, there's online <laughs> dealers? Huh? There, there's online dealers. I'm an online dealer. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Well, so I always pictured online gambling. Okay. I've played the slots online before, but right. so I thought you went into a room and it was like a computer that would like spit the cards out. And I mean, no. there's, <laughs> there's oh, people. So, I'm one. Yeah. Okay. So you're, so do, do you see you and everybody else's face or is it just you? No. you okay. So I am sitting in a studio and I have a camera on me and I see people's usernames pop up and they can see me, but I can't see them. So you just flip the cards over, like literally like you would if they were at the table and then they can see them and then they yeah, can. The, the computer screen, you know, it, it, it's, it's like playing solitaire, but people are there. <laughs> oh my goodness yeah. well that is so, so that that's what i'm saying that's opening up a lot so there are actually a lot of jobs opening up for that because atlantic city and even philadelphia are heading more towards that way so do you sit in the studio in the casino proper or can you be in like your house yeah, in a casino okay so you actually go are you like at an actual table like in the middle of the floor or is there like a separate like no, we're we're off of the casino floor. I can't say where or what yeah. casino. Yeah, but we're we're off of the floor. But it's it's a blackjack table and a roulette table. Yep, it's it's the whole thing. <laughs> well, that is the, one of the most interesting um, jobs that I've heard of. Uh, it is interesting. <laughs> yeah, and people can tip you like normal through uh-huh. the, the app or through the website or something. Uh, that's a benefit. You know what I mean? Like that's a good direction that Atlantic city is going. Cause there are a lot of jobs opening up for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's all these people that like, I just read some articles about how, um, you know, the casinos struggling during COVID. A lot of the people that work at the casinos in the city are, you know, struggling. A lot of them are going to lose their houses. Their, their food lines are really long. How hard there's plenty of jobs 
right to do there that you just have to learn how to do them um out of the thousands of people that are out of work or that live in poverty that are in atlantic city is it just a matter of them getting trained to go down and learn how to deal yeah, I, from what i have seen there's jobs everywhere there's jobs everywhere you know you just i mean there's a lot of jobs actually you just have to look and apply and you know but yeah atlantic city and that's one of the reasons you know, I, I left, I used to work in Atlantic City. I was a cocktail server. I left there, you know, I ventured off and did other things. And I came back because, you know, the jobs, they it does pay well in Atlantic City and there's a lot of job opportunities there. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so there's no excuse for all the people that live five minutes from the boardwalk for them to be out of work and, and um, staying in food lines. I mean, there's plenty of jobs. They just need to go and get one, right? Exactly. I'm not trying to be... I'm not trying to be to break it down, um, you know, and, and make it sound like it's that easy, but it, it really is that easy. I, I don't get it. It is. I mean, I applied, you know, for my job and I got a call like a week later. I mean, it's, yeah, they're out there. Oh. Well, that was really interesting. Well, um, <laughs> thanks for giving people a perspective on what it's like there. And, you know, hopefully, you know, things can kind of turn around. If they can get the crime figured out, I think that'll help a lot. Um, you know, you can't, <laughs> You, you can treat the mentally ill, but you can, you just got to clean it up so that people don't feel like they're going to get stabbed or shot or chased around. At, there needs, there thing. needs to be more police on the streets in general, you know, and even and on the boardwalk, I used to feel safe on the boardwalk. I don't like that, you know, on my break, I go out, you know, and sit on the boardwalk if the weather's nice. And I mean, pretty much every day there's someone out there that makes me feel uncomfortable, you know, and I go right back inside. So there needs to be more police that needs to be more active and yeah, they need to catch criminals and they need to, you know, they, they shouldn't release them so soon either. That's another thing, you know, people get arrested and then they're released, you know, a week later or whatever. And then they just reoffend or do whatever else. Um, when did Atlantic city, has it always been bad or has it gotten worse there? Do you know? Um, I, I know. Um, Around the eighties and stuff is when they, you know, I mean, Atlantic City always had a rough past from the very beginning. Um, but I mean, far as I know it, you know, I'm I'm 37, and I know the area like the back of my hand. So, yeah, Atlantic City always had rough times, um, crime too, and everything like that. But just over the last recent years, you know, with the casino, um, I think Philadelphia got casinos now. So it took away from the uh, tourists, um, tourists like people and stuff. Vegas, of course, everything's pretty much online now. You know, you can gamble online and stuff. So um, the city definitely took a toll, and I think they they lost the direction of how to really like, um, I guess, um, get people's attention because it's a tourist uh, attraction. You know, the city and you know, everything. So I guess they don't know where how to market itself or like appeal to to potential you know tourists and and stuff like that so they're having a rough time yeah is it mostly just i mean you you grew up there for a while um what kind of stuff was going down in atlantic city when you were growing up oh man um i i would say it was a lot of um it still is you know it's just a lot of drug activity going on and you know just like a the regular city, you know, just got their problems and stuff. But Atlantic City, um, I mean, we got good side, good things about it, but it's a lot of bad versus the good, you know, when it comes to things. Um, but I mean, I can only speak from like for what I know. I know back Merlin, you know, a lot of crimes, a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, government assistance really high there. You know, a lot of people depend on that. Um, the casino. I never worked in the casino, actually, believe it or not. And um, but a lot of people I know did, and um, they said the casinos is like is is the worst ever now. Like, like it's just like um, not not really the main attraction anymore around here, you know. Um, and the roads is broken down too, you know. It's just the political system here, like it's just needs needs to be um. It just we need some new, um, new, new ideas and new um, solutions to a lot of the problems we have in the city. Yeah, 
how much how much of the like the 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 crime is related to the casinos being in town because there's really not a lot of right that I, that I saw in that part of the state. It's pretty nice, and then there's it's either like small towns or nothing, and then all of a sudden you come to Lake State, it's just like straight hood. Um, <laughs> is it because yeah. of like the, the casinos? Is that why crime's bad? I just think the, the the casino lifestyle, the gambling and stuff like that, and a lot a lot of liquor stores and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff, like just cities with like gam. Like, I don't want to say gambling's a bad thing, but um, you know, it can be a bad thing to the wrong people. Who's not uh, who's not like getting um, you know, not low low income people. You know, just looking to to cash out on anything. You know, just to make a quick buck or something like that. Like there's people with really um addiction problems there, you know, not drugs and stuff related, but more gambling too, you know. So um, like I said, a lot of locals go to the casinos and and they gamble their money, and, and it's just based off that same routine. It's like get more people in and and to gamble and stuff because they need money because nobody else is coming here too much you know we have tourist people who come here but other than that i mean it's it's pretty much downhill from there and um um marty smalls um is running it now he's the um he's the uh, mayor of atlantic city i believe yeah so um he he got his own things going on in the town and stuff a lot of uh shady back deals and stuff like that going on you know, pocketing the sum of the money and stuff like that. It's it's in the news, so it's this this is not nothing that I'm just making up. You can read about it, but um, but yeah, it's it's just like I said, the city is lost how to direct how to how to um how to cope with the changes going on in the new era of um technology and online gambling and stuff. So, mm-hmm. but these problems existed for a while though, like. Um, even before the online gambling and all that stuff, and before Philly started getting casinos and stuff, um, you know, it's just the same mentality over here, and nobody can really get ahead, really too much. Um, a lot of people are are um, trained and thought that the best place to really get money is here is the casino. So a lot of people work at the casinos looking for, you know, the the money just looking for more money and stuff. But at the end of the day, it, it, it just, um, it's a bad atmosphere. I, I believe in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so what was going on in your house? Cause you got out of there. You got a good head on your shoulders. You, you're, you know, you guys got out of there for too long. What did, what, what did you guys, your folks like, you know, were yeah, really yeah. able to like, I mean, um, just, just knowing, just knowing it, you know, just, it's one thing to live it, but just knowing it and just realizing, just looking around and seeing the destruction go on and the crime go up and stuff. And, you know, just, just wanting better. That's all, you know, um, like I said, my parents took us out, um, you know, early, you uh, know, and that's what I wanted, you know, for my kids and everything too, you know, um, it's just a different scenery, different lifestyle. Because um, the one there is not this, you know, and it could be it could it could be changed. And I'm not saying that Atlantic City is always going to be that way. Maybe maybe change might come, but um, it's definitely needed right now, you know. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to get out, and 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 we I, I just know like from my parents and stuff, I you know, because I, I went to EHT, that's Egg Harbor Township, that's where I graduated from. I was out there from 12 until like 21. And um, it was pretty good out there, you know. What I mean, it was, it was better than the city. It's, it's more like rural country, kind of like more trees and stuff, less buildings, but um, definitely um, a better upbringing than than in the city. Is there what direction do do people that still live there? Are they like optimistic that Atlantic City can turn around and be awesome again, or, or most people not like- the people I met? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I didn't meet too many people that felt that way. I mean, I'm sure it's people there that that feel like the city might c- can come around, but you count on 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 two maybe one hand. Like, it's not too many people who think that. I know, I know a lot of people want to see better, though. They definitely want to see better. Um, but uh, 
But yeah, I mean, I, I would like to see better for the city. But like I said, the the politic, the politics, and and you know the mayor and stuff, things got to be changed locally, you know, in the area for things to take great effect because, you know, that's who's running it. You know, are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey everyone, so it's pretty clear by now that elected leaders aren't gonna help you. If you don't like what you saw in this video, demanding change won't work. You're gonna have to do it on your own. If you wanna be safe and want your community to be a place where people wanna live, you're gonna have to clean the place up yourselves. You're gonna have to work with your friends and neighbors to lower crime. Politicians clearly don't care as much anymore. It's up to us. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.